You boys be quiet down there! Bigger, badder, better scaling action. Link play battle. Exotic roadkill. And celebrity rivals who just won't go down without a fight. Is it thrash rally or trash rally? Stick around and find out on this episode of Neo Geo Generation. The Neo Geo library received three top-down racing games in the system's lifetime. Thrash Rally from ADK, Overtop also from ADK, and Neo Drift Out from Visco. Neo Drift Out is generally considered the fan favorite, but on this episode we'll be looking at the first of the three. NGH number 038, Thrash Rally, 1991 from Alpha Denshi, later known as ADK. I've got both the MVS cartridge and the home cartridge here, so today we'll be looking at the game on... whatever, who cares, they're the same thing. Top-down racers obviously aren't the most impressive genre to showcase the power of the Neo Geo, but it's a game style that has been around since the early days of gaming, right up to the modern era. It's a genre that emphasizes pure fun over graphical spectacle. Personally, I'm quite partial to an overlooked 16-bit series called F1 Circus that started on the PC Engine, for example. So let's just jump into a game of Thrash Rally. Choose from two modes, World Rally Mode or Dakar Paris The Cape, the latter of which we'll be getting into in a bit. But for now, World Rally is your standard GP mode, letting you play through five ranked races throughout the world. And someone forgot to tell the guitarist that this is just the menu screen in a stuffy old racing game. They're jamming it out so hard in this solo. Wait, is that the guitar from Ninja Combat? It is. The soundtrack in Thrash Rally was composed by exactly who you'd probably expect, Hideki Yamamoto and Hiroaki Shimizu, two composers who made music for practically every Alpha Denshi game on the Neo Geo, from Magician Lord to Twinkle Star Sprites. Another ADK composer, Yuka Watanabe, credited here as Y Kurosawa, is also given special thanks in the credits, so who knows how many ADK regulars had some kind of hand. The soundtrack in this game gives off some serious ninja combat vibes. In general, the Thrash Rally soundtrack is catchy and inoffensive. I personally prefer the soundtrack in Thrash Rally to Ninja Combat, but looking at things objectively, the upbeat rock jams of Ninja Combat are easily better than the comparatively soulless, generic, bluesy rock style of the five main BGMs in Thrash Rally. So let's start the World Rally mode. Press A to accelerate and B button is your brake. Those are your only two buttons. Couldn't be simpler. Use left and right to steer, or rotate your car. That's it. This is easy pick up and play, but that doesn't mean the game is going to be easy. In World Rally Mode, you can choose from six cars, and you do get a pretty good range of choices here, from the well-rounded to the completely lopsided. So your pick makes a significant impact on gameplay, and you'll want to pick the car that suits your style. A well-rounded car like the Blaster LX is a good place to start, but a car with good handling like the Thunderjet will be the easiest to win with after some warm-up. So begin the game, and we find out that apparently this is another one of those ADK games like Ninja Combat, where there's no option to not load your data when you have a memory card inserted with a saved game on it. We'll just have to pull the card loose when we start the game in order to play from the beginning. In both modes, the other cars on the road aren't actually racing against you, they're just obstacles. You'll notice passing them won't affect your position in the race. It's all racing against the clock here to avoid game over and to beat your rival's times. Finishing first or even second place in a race is no easy feat. You're assigned a score based on your position at the end of each race, adding to your total score, which is tallied up for the five races. Like any arcade racer, you also have a countdown clock during the race, which gets more time added to it each time you pass a checkpoint. Run out of time and it's game over. Apparently your racer doesn't own the car, because when you lose, they just drive off with it and leave you behind. In home mode you get 4 credits, and at game over you can save your progress in the world rally to the memory card to pick up later. 
If you're struggling or pick the wrong car, it's easy to get stuck on the third or fourth race in the series. But in general, finishing the five race world rally mode within the time limit on MVS difficulty is very doable with some practice and patience. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. The collision detection is very half-baked in this game. You sort of partially pass through other cars before any glancing hit is registered, sometimes literally passing right through them. It's apparent from the way the car sprites overlap each other that there is no clear-cut collision system here. Perhaps this loose collision detection was instituted to rein in the game's difficulty. The game may have been too difficult and frustrating if touching the car sent you out of control, considering the amount of traffic often on screen. Hitting the animals on the roads causes your car to slow down more than hitting the other cars. Um, no animals were harmed in the making of this video. The scaling effect used in the jumps was probably the most impressive bigger, badder, better feature when Thrash Rally launched. The main challenge of these jumps is making sure your car is going straight when you hit them, since the game doesn't warn you ahead of the jumps. The way the screen fades and scales in at the beginning of each race is a great graphical flourish that was impressive in 1991. I mean, it's just a top-down racer, how impressive was this back in the early 90s? Birds, helicopters, balloons, and planes are great touches that add to the spectacle. There's even a train driving off to the side of the course at one point. Look, even Nicolas Cage is beating me. Damn you, Nick Cage. Sure, you're great, but everyone knows you're in too much stuff. Your mediocrity comes from spreading yourself too thin. I don't care who wins, as long as one of us beats that guy. Less than 10 minutes in, and we've reached the fifth and final stage, the Royal Automobile Club in England. This will test all we've learned up to this point, though stage four is probably harder. The BGM here is the same as the title screen theme, so you know it's the final battle. Actually, I wouldn't have known how badass and magician lordy this title screen track gets if I hadn't sat and listened to the whole thing by playing through a race with it. So if you can manage to rank first in World Rally Mode, which is not at all easy to do, then you'll qualify for a sixth race, which is actually just the other mode in this game, the Dakar Paris, the Cape. After finishing this, only then will the game show the end credits. Speaking of that, now let's look at the other mode, Dakar Paris, the Cape, aka the mode where you cross the entire continent of Africa in three minutes. Here you have some additional vehicles to choose from, bringing the total up to 9, including bikes and a freaking big ass truck. This mode is just one longer race, lasting just 3 minutes or so, with several checkpoints. This mode has its own music, bringing the total to 6 unique in-race tracks in this game, and due to the race length, you'll hear a larger chunk of the song in this mode. Finishing the race before the clock runs out is a good challenge that will probably take you some retrying and studying of the course before you'll be able to complete it, but again, it's completely doable with some persistence. The variety of vehicles and breezy length make it a good challenge that should keep you coming back for a while. Thrash Rally is one of three games on the Neo Geo that allows you to link two cartridges together for multi-system play, and the last of the three we will be looking at in this video series. The other two games were Riding Hero and League Bowling. In Thrash Rally, this multiplay mode can only be used in the Dakar Paris mode. At least here in Thrash Rally, you can play through the whole Dakar Paris course in Link Play, a bit better than Riding Hero, which only let you play the first track of the game in Link mode. Seriously, what a waste of technology. Why not allow the game to move on to the next race in two-player mode? I actually own all three Link Cable games in both AES and MVS formats, specifically for Link Play. You can link an MVS cartridge to an AES cartridge exactly like you would with two of the same cartridges. 
It will work as long as the MBS has a Unibios running in AES mode. Alternatively, you could play the MBS card on an AES system using a converter. Trust me, it will work. I've tested all three games. You just need a BIOS in AES mode. By the way, I've tried doing the same trick with both systems set to MBS, and for some reason it won't work that way. Perhaps because the home console is lacking the hard dip switches needed to set the system address used in MBS mode. So now let's take a quick look at the game running in multiplay mode, with highlights from a match between me playing on the MBS and my brother Sturad on the AES. We've got the two cartridges connected now, but we haven't started the game yet. You can see the game is now loaded with communications, and it's now possible to play up to two players at the same time. Select the Dakar Paris mode on one of the systems, and Brooke Shields or someone comes up on both screens, waiting a moment for someone else to join. This is where you now press start on the other system. Select your vehicles, and we're off to the races. Okay, and they're underway. They're neck and neck, and it's already getting ugly around this first turn. Stu Rat eats it into the wall, and I promptly lose control. And Stu Rat hits the outside of another corner. Stu Rat hasn't been playing this game lately like I've been. Also, my capture setup loses sync from time to time, and I'm racing blind for a few seconds. It records just fine, I just can't see what I'm doing when I lose my preview feed. And Sturat manages to catch up. And Sturat, once again, into the wall. Alright, look out for those elephants on the road. We don't want PETA after us in this match. Someone tells Sturat the goal isn't to hit all the cones. And Sturat wipes out. Is there time left to catch up? It isn't enough, and I manage to hold on to the lead for the remainder of the three minute race. Alright, now let's take a look at the Neo Geo CD version. For the Neo Geo CD release of Thrash Rally, the game was renamed to Rally Chase for some reason. This is the only case where a Neo Geo game received a new title for its CD release. The most likely reason for the name change is that the game got some updates. The most significant change is now the game has a manual transmission option. The entire bottom row of cars in the select in both modes now have required manual transmission. The game's controls have been updated to reflect this change. Here, instead of simply having an accelerate and brake button, now the A button is low gear, B button is your second gear, which the game calls high, and the A and B buttons held together is your third gear, called supercharger. Put it in H! This allows your car to reach speeds slightly higher than what's possible in the original Thrash Rally on cartridge, making the gameplay faster. They've done away with the brake button entirely, now you brake by simply letting go of the buttons, and this is true whether you're playing a manual transmission vehicle or not. By the way, the game is very strict about when you can shift up. The game will prompt you on screen when it's time to shift up, and if you shift too early, it will basically halt your acceleration and wait for you to shift back down before proceeding. That said, the on-screen prompt makes manual transmission super easy to use, and you will spend most of the time in the third gear supercharger mode unless you crash, so it shouldn't be a huge challenge for players who aren't used to manual transmission. In addition to being able to drive faster, Rally Chase gives you more time to finish the race than in the original, making for a much easier experience than the cartridge version. I could see most players preferring the game this way. Challenge notwithstanding, this is basically the definitive version of the game. Rally Chase is like the director's cut of Thrash Rally. I don't know why they chose this particular game of all the Neo Geo library to update, but I guess someone at SNK or ADK must have been keen to improve it. 
Other than the new manual transmission, another odd change I noticed is that they've added trucks on the road during the race in some of the stages. The same truck you can play as in the Dakar Paris mode. The trucks are just there for certain sections, rather than the whole race, and simply drive off course at the end of their section of track. And speaking of the Dakar Paris mode, they've relabeled it to 1992 Paris Le Cap in the CD version. Other changes in the CD game. Your vehicle hits the brakes and does this fancy spin after crossing the finish line in each race. Not a bad flourish, showing off the car rotation. Whereas the original just had the car drive straight through. They've also removed the car names from the select screen in order to display manual or automatic transmission here. The CD game is otherwise exactly the same as the cartridge version, containing no new music or graphics except for the new name on the title screen. The game loads up in 45 seconds on a single speed system, and 27 seconds on a CDZ. The initial load is all that's needed, and the game never needs to load again after this. As with all of the early ADK Neo Geo CD releases, someone did a terrible job of transferring the cartridge music to CD. It's mono audio with a weird echo added. It's strange that ADK has so much trouble with just basic audio mastering for a retail game. You can sample the Brook Shields Link Cable weight screen music on track 4 of the CD if you like. But this screen obviously isn't accessible on CD systems, so unless the music is used somewhere else in the game I'm not aware of, this music track doesn't get used anywhere in the CD game. Just this year, a little fan-made bonus became available for this game. I happened to be playing Rally Chase on the Neo Geo CD one day, and it occurred to me that since the entire game loads up in one go at boot, it might be a relatively simple task to convert the Rally Chase CD version back to cartridge format so that it can be enjoyed on AES and MBS systems. I remarked about this on a public forum, and fan coder and hacker Punch MSX sprang into action and got the game up and running in short order. It wasn't quite as simple as just converting the 68,000 program file to cartridge, but close. There were a few CD-specific commands included in the code for some reason, causing the game to hang for extra time between certain screens on cartridge systems while waiting for the non-existent CD drive. He was able to get around this by simply finding all the commands in the code and nulling them out. There, that got the game fully up and running on cartridge systems, and it even still has all of the original music and sound, save for a track mode, which is missing sound for some reason. All that was left was fixing the title screen. Just look at the beautiful mess you got before updating the C graphics ROMs. They changed the word RALLY to be in all capital letters for the Rally Chase logo for some reason, and it's funny that they simply replaced the letters in the original locations in the graphics file, while changing their position on the screen. I fixed the title screen by replacing the C-ROMs with the CD versions. Converting graphics from CD to cartridge or vice versa is very simple thanks to a handy tool called NGFX Graphics Editor, which allows you to save a Neo Geo graphics file in either cartridge or CD format. That's all there is to it. You simply patch three or four of the game's files in your original Thrash Rally ROM to update it to Rally Chase. Only the program file and the title screen graphics get updated. Everything else is the same as the original Thrash Rally cartridge. The patch game works great on real hardware, as shown here. The soft dip settings screen calls this one Thrash Rally CD, which was probably the working title for this version of the game before they came up with Rally Chase. Thrash Rally probably isn't the best racing game on the Neo Geo, but it was the only top-down racing game on the system until 1996, when Visco's Neo Drift Out and ADK's Overtop were released. It certainly isn't a graphical showcase for the bigger, badder, better hardware, but the scaling looks cool. The game has responsive controls, and learning the five tracks plus the extended Dakar Paris track is enough to keep you busy for a while. Arcade racers in general aren't long, and don't have many tracks, with the Neo Geo's three top-down racers all being no exception, so there isn't a whole lot of replay value here to keep you coming back, outside of mastering what's here on the four different difficulty levels. 
I remember Thrash Rally being fairly well known among the Neo Geo's library in the 90s, but being an older title, it seems to have gradually faded into the background after being overshadowed by one particular newer title. Still, Thrash Rally, and to a greater extent its CD upgrade, Rally Chase, is worth revisiting for its simple to pick up but difficult to master gameplay. At any rate, I recommend giving it a go. Thank you for watching another episode of Neo Geo Generation. Next time on the series, we'll be looking at NGH number 039, King of the Monsters 2. If you've been watching the series, you know that I wasn't a big fan of the first one, but the sequel changes things up in many ways. Is it more worth your time than the original? Please join me next time. Until then, go play some Neo Geo. This is Neo Alec, signing off.